no humans were harmed in making this video. Unfortunately, the same can't be said about uh, Sonoff devices. If you're curious what just happened, well, I guess you have to keep watching. Hey guys, today I received Sonoff Dual R3 and this device is pretty awesome. Apart from a couple of interesting functions, uh, it comes with a secret as well. So we're gonna talk about this and we're also gonna address what happened to my device. You might be thinking that this is similar to Sonoff Mini, something I've talked about it in this video. It's still Wi-Fi and it obviously connects your lights. You can go behind a switch or in a ceiling rows or ceiling fitting, depending on where you live and how your house is wired. In fact, to create this device, Sonoff has merged a couple of different ideas coming from devices like Sonoff POWR2, Sonoff Mini, obviously, and Sonoff Dual. So what we've got in here is a form factor of Sonoff Mini and the ability to use a switch. From Son of Jewel, we obviously have ability to interact with two gangs and two switches. And from Son of POWR2, we have a power measurements for each channel, which is super exciting. Upon closer inspection, this Son of Dual R3 has less terminals than I would expect it to. This also means that we'll have to split the wires in order to connect it correctly. It comes with this very handy bracket, which can be used on DIN rails. And if that isn't your thing, then you can go for standard screws. So let's talk about specification. This is meant to be connected to mains, obviously, because you're controlling lights, uh, but you can also control motors. So if we're talking about resistive loads like uh, lights, uh, then you can have up to 10 amperes per single gang. When we're talking about the inductive loads, like motors, garage openers, or blind shutters, uh, then you're limited to one amp and 240 watts maximum. So bear that in mind, because that's important. Now it's Wi-Fi, it's 2.4 gigahertz, so there is no changes here. And as I mentioned before, the power measurements are available per channel, so you'll be able to monitor the channel individually. That also explains why we have a two lines in. In order to feed it and measure it, you'll have to supply individual power lines. And that means more cable splitting. It's time to hook it up and pair it with EWLink app. Now the pairing process reveals a big secret inside. It actually uses Bluetooth. So it got me head scratching. Why? I don't remember ESP8285 or 8266 having Bluetooth. So it's clear I'm going to be poking inside after checking it out. The pairing process was quick and painless. And then I was greeted with a really nice setup guide, which instructed me that I can use the device in three modes, as a motor controller, as a switch, and just as an inline power measurement device. That's quite interesting. And straight away after selecting a switch mode, I was giving controls over how I would like to interact with my hardware switches. Now you've got options for push, edge, and follow depending on what kind of switches you've got installed at home. That's really good because it will cover all the bases. Son of Dual R3 isn't like Son of Mini, it's actually using mains voltage on switches. Son of Mini was using 5 volt DC, this one using AC power in order to switch them on and off. You have to remember that when connecting these. I mentioned that there isn't enough terminals in order to get everything hooked, and that's exactly the case. I was attempting to connect a switch, and the main power to a switch, and a light bulb as well. As you can see, I had to use one of the splitters in order to provide neutral to all the devices. So I needed three wires for neutral, and then use individual terminals to connect a live wire. As before, it's responsive and you can obviously control it from the internet and the switch itself. But now, to add the switch, we're gonna go and complicate this a little bit more. But before we're gonna do this, since I've got this connected, we can investigate consumption panel in the EWLink app. Power consumption details are split between channels, which is great because you can monitor them independently and you can see all the details right now on the screen. 
you have this lovely chart and ability to actually provide real-time consumption by measuring a start and stop point. I'll provide you with obviously how much power you've used. Now that uh, value is going to be here zero because it's a LED lamp, it doesn't take much and I'm only running it for a couple of seconds. So let's hook up the switch right now and I'm going to showcase you why this is a bit of a problem because we don't have enough terminals to operate it this way. Unfortunately, I'll have to refer to another cable splitter in order to get this powered. And since the device supports multiple switches, you can imagine what's going to happen then. I blew up for... So let's talk about what happened and I'm super embarrassed because looking back at the footage it's very clear to me especially that I color coded my wires. My first mistake was to ignore the instructions. I only had a quick look at the instructions I had assumed that I remember how to wire this and obviously on the device itself you have markings. The second mistake uh, was me ignoring the values from the multimeter. It was clearly showing me what's going on and what's gonna happen if I'm gonna try to pull down like I would in a Son of Mini a switch. And my third and the last mistake was to ignore the colors of the wires which I prepared beforehand so I wouldn't confuse stuff. Unfortunately I was in a rush, I was trying to push the video out today and I burned the son of in the process. I'm still super embarrassed because the next thing I wanted to do is hack this. Fortunately for me, I actually opened this up and took some pictures and video before the accident happened. So I'm able to open it up for you and demonstrate what is the big secret inside. Now, upon the closer inspection, you'll see that there is a separate board that contains the microcontroller. And in this case, this is an ESP32. I think this is the first time I'm actually seeing ESP32 on a Sonos device because I don't think I've seen one before. I know that they've tried different microcontrollers for Wi-Fi, for example in this uh, Wi-Fi door contact, but I've not seen the ESP32 before. Will that be the trend moving forward? Hmm, I don't know, but I'm definitely going to ask ID guys and see what they're gonna say. In terms of hackability, it's 50-50. There are familiar pads on the PCB, which is 3.3 volts, ground, TX and RX. I also found additional RX2 and TX2, which probably have something to do with the second gang. But what I wasn't able to find was GPIO00. Granted, I didn't have enough time before I blew up the device to investigate more. While GPIO0 might be still linked to a button, it's going to be a while before I will be able to confirm this due to destroyed hardware. Right now, DIY mode isn't available. Now, I don't know if that's going to change in the future, I hope it will, uh, but you've got a LAN options if you want to control that of a local area network, then you can use it within an EvoLink app. Overall, that's going to be a great device to use, providing I'm going to stop blowing them up. Uh, one thing I should point out is I really wish that had a little bit more terminals so you would avoid splitting cables just like I've showed you in a video. I've already begged ideas to send me a second one so I could take my time and hack it, flash it with Tasmota and see what I can do with it since it's ESP32. Now, obviously that's gonna take some time, but if you want to know when that video or article is out, why don't you follow me on social media and find out? You obviously know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you that. Right? I hope you have a good old laugh at me and my stupid mistakes, I still feel embarrassed as heck. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.